Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. During the Q&A session, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 on your phone. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I would like to turn the meeting over to Mr. Charles Gamble. You may begin. Good afternoon, everyone, or good morning to the, those of you on the West Coast. As stated by our operator, my name is Charles Gamble, and I'm a supervisory survey statistician in the Outreach and Education Branch within the American Community Survey Office here at the U.S. Census Bureau. I want to thank you for attending today's webinar covering the introduction to the American Community Survey. Hopefully I can enlighten you and further your understanding of the ACS, the American Community Survey. Before I delve into the ACS itself, let's start with an overview about the U.S. Census Bureau as a whole. And yes, we do more than just count people. The Census Bureau is actually the largest of 17 primary federal government statistical agencies. During the decennial census, it is the second largest employer in the U.S. While we're best known for the decennial census or census of population and housing every 10 years, we also conduct more than 100 censuses and surveys of households and businesses across the nation each year. This includes the American Community Survey and more than 30 other household surveys. We also conduct over 60 economic programs. Of these, the economic census is the biggest and most comprehensive. The Census Bureau's mission is to serve as the nation's leading provider of quality data about its people and economy. And our goal is to provide the best mix of timeliness, relevancy, quality, and cost for the data we collect and services we provide. If you'd like to know more about the Census Bureau, please visit www.census.gov and select About Us. Let's now go over today's agenda regarding the ACS. The first part of today's webinar, I'll be going over the basics of the American Community Survey, including the history of the survey, how the data are collected, the topics included, and the geographies covered. Next, I'll discuss some of the tools available to help you access ACS data, followed by a demonstration of how to find the data using a few of, a few of these tools. I'll also cover some resources available on our website for learning more about the survey. And finally, I'll reserve some time at the end for questions. Starting off with the basics and foundation, the ACS, ACS is on the leading edge of survey design, continuous improvement, and data quality. It is the nation's most current, reliable, and accessible data source for local statistics on critical planning topics. The survey samples approximately 3.5 million addresses each year. These data are collected continuously throughout the year to produce annual social economic, housing, and demographic estimates. The data collected through ACS is used to distribute more than $675 billion of federal government spending each year. Our estimates cover more than 40 topics, support more than 300 known federal uses, and countless non-federal uses. Examples of some programs that, the, that use Census Bureau data to determine funding include the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which uses the data for the Supplement Nutrition Assistance Program, the National School Lunch Program, and Special Supplement Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children. The Department of Health and Human Services uses data for Medical Assistance Program, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families, and Head Start Program. The Department of Housing and Urban Development uses data for their Community Development Block Grant Program and Public Housing Capital Fund. And the Department of Transportation, which uses data for Highway Planning and Construction and Federal Transit Formula Grants. The Census Bureau releases three different sets of data estimates in regard to the ACS, each year in the form of one-year and five-year period data sets, as well as one-year supplemental estimates. I will discuss these products in more detail on an upcoming slide. In order to understand the ACS and ACS, what the ACS is and why it exists, we need to discuss a bit of, this, of census history. First census of the United States was conducted in 1790 and occurred every 10 years with one form being used to collect data from all households until 1930. From 1940 to 2000, the decennial census, is, which is the name of the census conducted every 10 years, contained a short form used to collect data from all households and a long form that was used to collect data from a sample of households. The long form approach worked well initially, but the data became less and less current as the decade progressed after each decennial census. In the early 1990s, demand from a wide variety of users for current, nationally consistent data led federal government policymakers to consider the feasibility of collecting social, economic, and housing data 
continuously throughout the decade. In 2000, a large-scale demonstration of the American Community Survey was conducted. The ACS was then fully implemented in 2005 and began collecting data for all of America's communities each year. There was also the Puerto Rico Community Survey, PRSC, PRSCS, which is equivalent to the ACS in Puerto Rico. In 2010 and moving forward, the decennial census is only a short form sent to all households because the ACS now collects information each year that was once collected by a long form each decade. Up to this point, I've mentioned the decennial census several times. Now it's to compare the ACS with the decennial census. ACS estimates are based on a sample of the population, whereas the census is based on the official count of the population. Every year, over 3.5 million housing unit addresses are con contacted by the Census Bureau to participate in the ACS. The information obtained from the sample is then used to estimate characteristics about the total population in a timely and cost-effective manner. However, these estimates differ from those that would be obtained in, census, in the census, where every household in the nation is contacted. This results in an element of uncertainty in the ACS data. As such, ACS estimates include a margin of error, or MOE for short. The MOE gives us more information about the population by telling us how much the estimate may vary from the true population value. But not to worry, we will talk more about the MOE later in this presentation. So what does the ACS collect? The ACS collects information that previously appeared on the census long form, collecting detailed social, economic, housing, and demographic characteristics. Whereas the census collects basic demographics via the short form, such as age, sex, race, Hispanic origin, household relationships, and housing tenure. Now what is produced? The ACS produces population and housing characteristics, whereas the census produces population and housing totals. When is the new data available? The ACS occurs annually, reflecting a period of time over which the data are collected, averaging data for 12 months or 60 months, whereas the census occurs every 10 years and reflects a point in time. Now you may be wondering, well, what method does the Census Bureau use to collect ACS data? The American Community Survey data collection operation uses three modes that take place over a three-month period, internet, mail, and personal visit. For most housing units, the first phase of data collection includes an invitation for the household to respond via internet, which is mailed to the sample address. Internet data collection began in 2013. Now, if the household does not respond via internet, a paper questionnaire is sent to the sample address for the household to complete and return by mail. If the census, is unable to, census Bureau is unable to reach an occupant of the address via internet or the paper questionnaire or the unit had an unmailable address, the address may be selected for computer-assisted personal interviewing, also known as CAPI. At any point in this process, receipt of an internet response or a completed paper questionnaire from the sample address results in the address being removed from the data collection workload. Also, respondents are always able to call the telephone questionnaire assistance the TQA line at any point during the three-month data collection cycle if they have questions about the survey or prefer to complete the survey over the phone. The content collected by the American Community Survey can be grouped into four main types of characteristics, social, demographic, economic, and housing. Social characteristics include topics such as education, marital status, fertility, veterans, disability status, place of birth, and others. The American Community Survey also collects basic demographic characteristics, such as sex, age, race, Hispanic origin. This is the same information collected on the decennial census. Economic characteristics, characteristics include such topics as employment status, income, commuting to work, occupation, industry, health insurance, and others. Housing characteristics include topics such as tenure, information about occupancy, and the structure itself, which includes home value, housing costs, utilities, plumbing, kitchen facilities, and others. Each question on the ACS is used for federal and state government programs. These topics are used to produce more than 1,000 tables for local communities, resulting in more than 11 billion estimates each year. The ACS provides data for more geographies on an annual basis than any other household survey. 
over 13,000 geographies for one-year estimates, 15,000 geographies for one-year supplemental estimates, and 776,000 geographies for the five-year estimates. The image on the slide shows some of the geographies for which ACS data are produced and the relationships between them. Low geographic areas fit neatly within the larger areas directly connected with lines. For example, school, congressional, and state legislative districts fit neatly within states and do not cross state boundaries. However, they may cross boundaries of counties or metropolitan areas. In this visualization, you can see the smallest geographic building block is the block group. The ACS a unique ability to report in a wide range of geographies is what gives it such a broad appeal. For reference, the 2017 ACS data releases contained 805,792 geographies. That included 13,534 for one-year estimates, 15,423,000 uh, for one-year supplemental, and 776,835,000 for five-year estimates. Covering a wide range of geographies or geographic areas, the ACS data are most commonly needed at the state, county, place, census tract, and block group geographic levels. This slide illustrates the relationship between these common geographic types and how they are nested within one another, as this example shows in El Paso, Texas. Census tracts are small statistical subdivisions within a county with populations of 1,200 to 8,000 people. Think small towns, rural areas, or neighborhoods. Block groups are a group of blocks within a census tract with 600 to 3,000 people, as you see blown out in the right corner of the screen. Again, ACS's unique ability to report on a wide range of geographies is what gives it its broad appeal. Now getting back to the ACS data products I referenced earlier, these products are released about one year after the data are collected. The first year of the data collection with a full sample was in 2005. The upcoming 2018 ACS data products will be released on a modified stagger schedule this year. ACS one-year data elements or estimates collected in 2018 are planned to be released on September 26, 2019, with some remaining tables and products coming out on October 17, 2019. ACS one-year estimates, which combine data collected over 12 months, are available for geographic areas with a population of 65,000 or more. ACS one-year supplemental estimates are a subset of detailed tables that are available for geographic areas with populations of 20,000 or more. They are simplified versions of popular ACS tables and provide the most current data to almost twice as many geographies as compared to the standard one-year release. We plan to release the one-year supplemental estimates on February 6, 2020. ACS five-year estimates, combined data collected over 60 months, are available for geographic areas of all sizes down to the census tract and block group level. The 2014 through 2018 ACS five-year estimates are planned to be released on December 19, 2019, with some remaining tables and products coming out on January 16, 2020. Thus, ACS data are available for geographic areas with a population of 20,000 or more in the form of one-year and five-year estimates. ACS data are only available for geographic areas with a population of less than 20,000 in the form of five-year estimates. We also release one-year and five-year public use microdata samples, or PUMS files, for users who want to create custom tables and variance replicate estimates for users who want to calculate margins of error. Use the link on this slide to access our complete release schedule. So I just covered the data products available. Now I want to show you how to access ACS data products. We cater to a variety of data users with unique needs. So we have a variety of data access tools. This is a list of a, list of a few of those tools. Quick Facts, which provides selected uh, statistics for all states and counties and for cities and towns with a population of 5,000 or more using the ACS as well as other Census Bureau data, data sets such as Population Estimates Program, the 2010 Census, County Business Patterns, Survey of Business Owners, Building Permit Survey, etc. My Congressional District gives you quick and easy access to selected statistics selected by the ACS and County Business Patterns. I'll, take a more, I'll talk more about my CD on the, on the coming slides. My tribal area 
gives you quick and easy access to, to selected ACS statistics for tribal areas. On the map for emergency management, provides data for disasters, natural hazards, and weather events using the ACS as well as other Census Bureau data sets, such as the 2010 Census, LEHD origin, destination, employment statistics. Census Business Builder provides selected demographic data from the ACS and economic data from the Census Bureau to help users start to start or grow a business or understand the business landscape for a region. Tiger line shape files with selected demographic data or topologically integrated geographic encoding and referencing shape files are available pre-joined with ACS five-year estimates and geodatabase format. Application program programming interface, or the API, lets developers create custom apps to reach new users and make key demographic, social, economic, and housing statistics more available than ever before. And data.census.gov is the Census Bureau's new data dissemination platform to access Census Bureau statistics. This platform is the primary way to access data for the 2018 ACS and releases moving forward. All data tools are available from census.gov. Choose the Explore Data tab from the blue ribbon at the top of the screen, then click on the Data Tools and Apps tab to view a comprehensive list of tools and apps. To provide a bit more detail on these tools, let's go over the Quick Facts. So Quick Facts is a quick and easy way to access facts about people, business, and geography. Quick Facts provides statistics for all states, counties, cities, and towns with a population of 5,000 or more. It's great for making quick comparisons between two geographies. Some topics you can compare are population, age and sex, housing, health economy, transportation, business, and others. And you can compare up to five geographies at once. My Congressional District, commonly referred to as MyCD, gives you quick and easy access to selected statistics from the American Community Survey and county business patterns. County Business Patterns is an annual series that provides subnational economic data by industry. This series includes a number of establishments, employment during the week of March 12th, first quarter payroll, and annual payroll. Use this tool for information on congressional districts, statistics on people, workers, housing, social, socioeconomic, education, and business. And you can also embed MyCD, the MyCD application on your website for users to use. My Tribal Area is a new tool that allows you to access statistics representing the entire population that lives on American Indian and Alaska Native areas. Features, this features the latest ACS five-year estimates at the reservation and tribal area level. Users are able to utilize a type ahead search function and search by state for tribal areas. This data features people, jobs, housing, economy, and education topics. The On the Map for Emergency Management tool is a good resource to assist in ev evaluating the impact of potentially affected area or learn from the history of a disaster. On the Map for Emergency Management automatically incorporates real-time data updates from the National Weather Service and the National Hurricane Center for hurricanes, floods, and winter storms. The Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, for disaster areas, Department of Interior, and Department of Agriculture for wildfires as well as the Census Bureau for Demographic and Economic Data, including the American Community Survey. Census Business Builder is designed for users needing data such as potential customers, similar businesses, and consumer spending to help start or grow a business or to better understand an area's business landscape. There are two editions of a Census Business Builder, referred to as CBB. We have the Small Business Edition and a Regional Analyst Edition. The Small Business Edition was built primarily for small business owners who need easy access to information about potential customers and similar businesses. The Small Business Edition includes the following data. Social, economic, housing, and demographic data from the ACS, business data from the county business patterns, non-employer statistics, economic census, and survey of business owners, import and export data from the International Trade Program, consumer spending data from ESRI, and farms data from the Census of Agriculture. 
The demographic and consumer spending data are available at the state, county, city, town, zip code, and census tract levels. Economic data are available at the state, county, and city town levels, and agricultural and trade data are available at the state level only. In July 2017, a new feature was added that now allows CEB users to upload their own data via an Excel file. The regional analyst edition of Census Business Builder was built primarily for chambers of commerce, regional planners, and others who need a broader portrait of the people and businesses in their service area. It presents data for all sectors of the economy and for user-defined regions made up of one or more counties or cities or towns. The Regional Analyst Edition includes the same interactive and customizable data dashboard, download options, and map features as a small business edition. Nearly the same map variables are also, known, are also shown at the same geographic levels. Moving forward, the Tiger Line Geodatabases brings together geography from the Tiger Line shapefiles and the American Community Survey five-year estimates. This is a great resource for data users who want to map our data. You can also check out our related tra training presentation, How to Use ACS Geodatabases Files and ArcMap, on the ACS website for more information. Each training presentation includes a recorded webinar, slides, and speaker notes. In keeping with our modern era of information on the go, the Census Bureau has created an application program interface, or once again, API, for developers who, to utilize publicly available detailed ACS data in the development of web or mobile apps. The API contains multiple data assets as well as data sets from our other censuses and programs. For example, the 1990, 2000, and 2010 census, the 2007 and 2012 economic census, non-employer non statistics and county business patterns, business dynamic statistics, economic indicators, and population estimates and projects. Formats available for these apps include HTML, XML, and JSON. You can also check out our related training presentation using the Census API with the American Community Survey on the ACS website for more information. Each training presentation includes a recorded webinar, slides, and speaker notes. So I want to mention that American Fact Finder is being retired. Therefore, I want to take a moment to let you know about the future of accessing data from the Census Bureau. The Census Bureau is launching a new data dissemination platform, data.census.gov. This platform will be the primary way to access data from the 2018 American Community Survey, 2020 Census, and more. The vision for data.census.gov is based on overwhelming feedback to streamline the way you get data and digital content from the Census Bureau. Since 2016, we have made data.census.gov available as a public site while continuously releasing new improvements every few months based on user feedback. These updates will continue as we are committed to giving you the functionality you want and need in a, in a dissemination system. With that in mind, we encourage you to check out data.census.gov, start familiarizing yourself with the navigation you'll see on September 26th for the one-year estimates release and tell us how you can make or how we can make your experience better by emailing sedsci, C-E-D-S-C-I dot feedback at census.gov. To learn more, please visit the link at the bottom of this slide. While we're talking about ways to access data through data tools, it's helpful to know more about the types of data products available in the ACS. Broadly speaking, the data products are either profiles or tables. The letters in parentheses, in parentheses next to the profile and table types, as you can see on this slide, and the next correspond to the beginning of the table ID. I will explain the table IDs in a few moments. First, let's hone in on the data profiles. Profiles offer a broad look at a community's social, economic, housing, and demographic characteristics. They generally include many different variables, and the geography or population group is at the center. ACS includes the following types of profiles. Data profiles, which provide broad social, economic, housing, and demographic profiles. Comparison profiles, that offer comparisons of data profiles estimates across ACS years. And selected population profiles. These profiles provide broad social, economic, and housing profiles for a large number of race, ethnic, 
ancestry, and country region of birth groups. The tables are the other type of data products available in the ACS. Tables provide a precise or detailed view of a subject and subject matter is at the center of the table. ACS includes the following types of tables. Detailed tables, which provide access to the most detailed ACS data and cross tabulations of ACS variables. Supplemental tables are simplified tables that provide ACS statistics at a lower population threshold than the standard one-year data tables. Subject tables, similar to data profiles, but include more detailed ACS data classified by subject. Ranking tables, which provide state rankings of estimates across 80 plus key variables. But please note, at the moment, data.census.gov does not have the capability to support ranking tables. Ranking tables will only be available on the FTP site this year. And last, the geographic comparison tables, which compare geographic areas other than states, such as counties or congressional districts, for key variables. Now that you understand more about the types of data products we offer, let's talk about how we number them. While the characters of the table ID may look random at first, each table ID is purposely numbered to describe its content and format. For example, B06004APR shows that the table contains place of birth statistics for the white, white alone population in Puerto Rico. Table IDs consist of up to five elements. Element one identifies the table type. In this example, the type of table is a base table which is a type of table, which type of detail table. Therefore, the letter B is used. Element two identifies the subject. In this case, the subject of the table is place of birth, 06. Element three is a sequential number, a set of two or three digits that uniquely identifies the table within a given subject, 004. Element four is the race iteration of the table. Each table is repeated for the nine major race and Hispanic or Latino groups. The A stands for white alone. Element five is for tables where the content of the table for Puerto Rico differs from the U.S. table. A comparable U.S. table ID will have the same first four elements but without the fifth element, PR. Visit the URL at the bottom of the slide for a complete explanation of the table numbering system. I want to now take a few moments and show you demonstrations of a few ACS data tools. I will walk you through three examples using different tools to find ACS data. In my first example, we will use QuickFacts to find commuting times for a place or what you might refer to as a city or town. Start by going to QuickFacts at census.gov forward slash QuickFacts as shown at the bottom of the slide. In this example, I typed in Denver into the search box. Then chose the Denver City, Colorado option and selected transportation from the Select a Fact drop-down menu. I can see the mean travel time to work is 25.3 minutes in Denver City, Colorado. Next, I click on the dashboard button and then, and then Denver City, Colorado. I can now see the table, map, and chart for my selected geography. The table shows an overview of statistics for my geography, while the map and chart specifically show mean travel time to work for different places in Colorado. Next, I'm going to use my congressional district to find income and earnings data for Congressional District 4 in Georgia. Start by going to my congressional district at census.gov forward slash mycd as shown on the slide. In this example, I selected Georgia in step one as my state and Congressional District 4 and Step 2 as my district. Then I click on Socioeconomic. Now I see information about income for my Congressional District, such as information circled on the screen. The median household income is $57,349 for Congressional District 4, Georgia. You can also download these results as a CSV file, as well as share them by embedding a widget on your website using the function key download and share at the bottom right below the table. For my last demonstration, I'm going to find the median housing value for all counties in California using data.census.gov, our new dissemination platform. First, start by going to data.census.gov, 
Then click on Advanced Search. Under the Filters, Filters heading, select Topics. Then select Housing, Financial Characteristics, Housing Value, and Purchase Price. You will now see your selected filters down below update with the Housing Value and Purchase Price criteria. Our next step after selecting our topic will be to select the geography. First select geography, located under browse filters, then select county, California as your state, and all counties in California. Your selected, criteria, your selected filters at the bottom will now update with the geography selected. Now click search at the bottom right corner. From here you can select the table you want. We're going to select the table called Median Value Dollars, so we click View All Tables. In the list of tables on the left-hand side, select the Median Value Dollars table. Now we can see the median housing value for all counties in the state of California. You can manipulate the table further from this page by clicking on Customize Table. The Customize Table feature allows you to change the geography, year, or data set, show and hide margins of error, transpose the table, download the table, and view more information about the data. Now let's talk about a variety of resources the Census Bureau provides for learning more about our, our data, tools, and about our survey at large. First, we have the ACS main page, which is a great tool to start with if you have questions about the ACS. This page can be found by going to census gov, then selecting Surveys Programs, then selecting ACS, or simply go to census.gov forward slash ACS. The American Community Survey website contains a lot of information about the survey, data products, tools for data users, and other helpful information. You may also be curious as to why we ask questions about a specific topic on the American Community Survey. Every question has a required purpose and many uses to help communities. Explore the set of interactive Why We Ask webpages to discover the importance of each question. These pages can be accessed by selecting the Why Do You Ask Each Question feature. For each topic, you can browse some of the most popular results from that question and view the question as it appears on the form. We also provide information on the origin of the question, how we protect your privacy, and how ACS statistics help communities. Our data tables and tools page will introduce you to the most popular tools and data products with descriptions and links for each. The comparison guidance page provides broad information about comparing ACS estimates across years with Census 2000 and with the 2010 Census. From the left navigation, outlined in red, you can find yearly guidance on the comparison of data sets, as well as the specific topics and subject, subjects. For example, if you were interested in data about computer and internet use from 2016, you would select the year and then select the topic, computer and internet use. From here, you can see the Census Bureau recommends comparing the 2016 data and 2015 data with caution due to question wording changes. The Comparing ACS data page can be found by visiting the ACS homepage, census.gov forward slash ACS, then select Guidance for Data Users, and next, Comparing ACS Data. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, the ACS provides estimates and that in itself is a strength of the American Community Survey, estimating characteristic distributions. The Census Bureau recommends that users compare population characteristics such as percents, means, medians, and rates rather than estimates of, to of population totals. Now if you're looking for population totals, we recommend using the, the, the decennial census or population estimates program. In general, the Census Bureau recommends that you do compare estimates from non-overlapping periods. For example, compare a 2008 to 2012 ACS 5-year estimate to a 2013-2017 ACS 5-year estimate. Do not compare overlapping periods. For example, the 2012-2016 ACS 5-year estimate to the 2013-2017 ACS 5-year estimates. Do compare similar period lengths. For example, one year to one year. Don't compare estimates from different period lengths. For example, don't compare the one year to the five year. It is also important to keep in mind the ACS data are estimates. 
We collect data from a sample of the population in the United States and Puerto Rico rather than from the whole population. To help you interpret the reliability of the estimates, the Census Bureau publishes a margin of error for every ACS estimate. Unless you take into account the MOEs, you cannot conclude the estimates are statistically different from one another. Instead, you have to conduct statistical testing when making comparisons between estimates to check for any differences. We will talk more about how to do this on an upcoming slide. Looking at estimates alone to decide if they are higher or lower than one another is not sufficient. As I just brought up margin of error, referred to as MOEs, in the previous slide, I now want to discuss MOEs and their importance. MOEs allow data users to be certain that at a given level of confidence, the estimate and the actual population value differ by no more than the value of the MOE. The Census Bureau uses a 90% confidence level as its standard. All ACS estimates published on data.census.gov have margins of error calculated at the 90% confidence level. It's also to important to note that MOEs provided by the Census Bureau are always in the same units as their respective estimates. For instance, a percent estimate will have a percent MOE, and a medium income estimate will have a MOE in dollars. On this slide, we have an example of a typical table, detail table B01001, sex by age as displayed on the data.census.gov for the state of Wyoming. As you can see, the table has three elements. The characteristics, aka the descriptions, which are the total male under five years, the estimates, and the company margins of error, all outlined in red. Put simply, the margin of error, or MOE, is a measure of the possible variation of an estimate around the population value. In this example, we want to know how many males under five live in Wyoming. We find the lower bound by subtracting the margin of error from the estimate. Similarly, we find the upper bound by adding the estimate and margin of error. We are 90% confident that the true number of males under age 5 in Wyoming falls between the lower bound of 18,828 and the upper bound of 19,520. Now let's discuss statistical testing and its importance. Statistical testing is an important part of data analysis, as it can tell us whether or not a difference in estimates is meaningful. In short, a statistical test is a test to determine if a difference is unlikely to have occurred by chance. To be statistically different, there must be a statistical evidence that there is a difference between two estimates. Statistical testing should be conducted anytime you make comparisons between two estimates. So now that you have the background, you can see why, see why making accurate comparisons matter. For example, if you're going to the city or county council asserting that a certain population has experienced poverty in higher proportions in recent years than it had in several years before, you want to make sure you've tested that, true difference, that a true difference exists. Or if you're the transportation planner in your county and you want to make, make the case for projects based on a perceived longer commute times, again, before you make the decision based on what you seem to see from the data, it benefits you to statistically test before you commit those public dollars and so on. The good news is you can test for statistical significance using math, or more specifically, algebra. This slide contains the formula for testing, for testing for statistical significance. Now, the good news is that you don't need to worry about relearning advanced algebra because the Census Bureau released its statistical testing tool for public use. This tool allows you to input estimates you'd like to test and receive a visual notification of whether the estimates are statistically different or not. Using the tool, you can, compare both, you can compare both pairs of estimates and groups of estimates against each other. The tool is available for download as an Excel spreadsheet via the link at the bottom of the slide. Moving on. Now, for users that have access to data but need more information to understand the tables and complete their analysis, we offer code lists, subject definitions, GQ definitions, instructions for applying statistical testing, comparison guidance, and accuracy of the data in our technical documentation section. The technical documentation page, as shown on this slide, can be found at the census.gov forward slash ACS and then selecting technical documentation on the left-hand side. Finally, from the terms American Community Survey to zip code tabulation area, the Census Bureau Glossary is a great resource to learn more about terms 
you see on our website. So while browsing census data, if you are unfamiliar with a term and its meaning, follow the link at the bottom of the slide and search for your term. As we begin to wrap up today's webinar, we invite you to stay in touch by telling us how you use data from, America, from the American Community Survey. For example, have you or your organization used the ACS to make an important decision, help your community, or expand your business? If so, please visit the link at the bottom of the slide to share your story and explore how data enthusiasts across the country are using ACS data in creative ways. By doing so, it provides further support for the importance of the data we collect here at the Census Bureau. And this is a great way to further promote our data. Also, I'm going to inform you that there is a group specifically for users of American Community Survey data, known simply as the ACS Data Users Group. The purpose of the ACS Data Users Group is to improve understanding of the value and utility of ACS data, as well as promote information sharing among data users about key ACS data issues and applications. The ACS Data Users Group includes a users group website and online community with almost 2,300 members. The website contains information such as previous conference presentations and archived webinars. This online community is a site where members can share messages, materials, and announcements related to ACS. And Census Bureau staff are also members and share program updates here. We also host ACS Data Users Conferences typically every two years in order to provide an opportunity for ACS data users and Census Bureau staff to showcase their work and exchange information about their experiences using ACS data. The conferences are open to the public and information is posted in advance on the Data Users Group website. Membership is free and open to all interested ACS data users. To learn more, go to acsdatacommunity.prb.org as listed at the bottom of the slide. If you are looking for further assistance on how to obtain or understand ACS data, our Data Dissemination Specialists, or DDSs, who are located within your region can pro provide you with assistance about Census Bureau data. These specialists usually provide help in English, but sometimes in other languages as well, depending on the needs of their communities. Whether conducting one-on-one -on -one webinars with, businesses, with business startups or conducting large-scale presentations at universities, these specialists strive to put the public in touch with the data they need. DDS has provided a wide variety of assistance for free. If you are interested in a specific type of training or presentation, please reach out to a specialist in your area using the contact information on this slide. In closing, I encourage you to connect with us, up with us directly. You can sign up for the Manage Alerts on the ACS via Gov Delivery. Also, add yourself to Gov Delivery if you want the slides from this presentation or any other presentations we provide. Gov Delivery will send out a broadcast when materials are available. You can visit our website, census.gov forward slash ACS, or connect on the various social media platforms using the hashtag, hashtag ACS data. We also have an email to help support data users who may have questions. acso.users.support at census.gov. Also, Please be aware that we will be conducting our 2018 ACS one-year pre-release webinar on September 19th, so be on the lookout for that next week. And one last thing before I open the line for questions. If you're, using, if you're using ACS estimates, make sure to source the Census Bureau and the American Community Survey as to where you receive the data. It helps people know that the information they're using is powered by the American Community Survey. This concludes today's webinar on the introduction to the American Community Survey. We want to thank you for attending and having an interest about the important data that the Census Bureau collects. I will now open the floor for questions. Thank you. At this time, we'll begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, please press star 1 on your phone and record your name clearly when prompted. To withdraw your question, please press star 2. One moment for our first question. First question from Doug Minter. Your line is now open. Okay, great. Thank you so much for this presentation. Will this be available for us to review or to send to other people, the recording? Yeah, so this will be able to review uh, the presentation and the recording. Um, as stated in the presentation, uh, Gov Delivery will send out a message when this material is available, and it will be available actually on our, AC, our ACS website. 
um, which is census.gov forward slash ACS. Um, it will contain the uh, previous webinar, this webinar, as well as the, uh, the slides and the recording. Okay, great. And then as a follow-up, when will the new business uh, survey of ACS be completed, and is the business data that's on the ACS site right now, does, is it still the old information? Okay, just can you repeat your question one time? Are you asking if the 2018 data has been posted yet, or are you asking? Yeah, yeah, when, yeah when will the 2018 business part of ACS be available, the new, new data, 2018 data? So the American Community Survey is a household survey, so we ask about your employer, you know, where you work, but we don't collect information about businesses. Okay, okay. I'm, I apologize. I know there's a community, a business survey that's done as well. I guess that's different than ACS. Okay. Thank you. Next question comes from Amy Dibido. Your line is now open. Oh, thank you. Um, I wanted to know what was the thinking behind presenting 90% uh, confidence intervals since uh, scientists generally make use of 95% confidence intervals, um, which are wider. Thank you. Hey, so this is Chase Sawyer. Um, I'm with the American Community Survey Office and work with Billy. So 90% confidence interval was just chosen as the Census Bureau standard. I'm not aware of the reason why that standard was chosen, but if you'd like to reach out to us at acso.users, dot support at census.gov. We'd be happy to look into that more for you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Next question comes from Jill Clunk. Your line is now open. Yes, thank you very much. Um, will there be a replay or a place where we can go and re-watch this uh, uh, session? So yes, there will be a replay of this that will be posted on our website, um, and a gov delivery message will be sent out when the material is available. Um, so you can go to census.gov forward slash ACS um, and go to our, uh, I believe it's um, help data users or guidance for data users, guidance for data users. Training, presentations. training presentations, correct, and it'll be posted right. there. Thank you. Next question comes from John Perrazzo. Your line is now open. Hello, thank you for this webinar. I learned a lot of the overview. I've used some of the products, but I'm grateful to know that you can uh, go to the mapping. I look forward to exploring that mapping. I've been using just uh, screen captures of the data. I'm on the Senior Citizen Advisory Board for our city, so it's been helpful. Uh, my question was actually answered in the statistics, and other question about the 90% confidence interval. So the new uh, inquiry looks hopeful. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Uh, just grateful for all this. Uh, uh, no specific question. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Myra Crook. Your line is now open. Hi, this is Kyra Crook calling from Columbus, Ohio, Jewish Family Services. I just want to thank you uh, for providing this information today. I am a statistics rookie, and I'd love to get information on how I can strengthen, strengthen my skills in this area. Uh, I said one of our best ways to strengthen your skills just with our data is, is simply um, going to our new, our new data dissemination platform, data.census.gov, and just get familiar with, uh, you know, browsing the data that pertains to you that you're seeking. Um, that's probably the best way, and also using our training tools on our website uh, to go over some of the basics of um, reviewing our data and how our data can be used. Thank you so much. Next question is from Raymond White. Your line is now open. Thank you. Um, I'm calling from uh, Lawrenceville, Georgia, and um, I wanted to ask a question uh, about ACS data in terms of how um, small business uh, consultants um, who are dealing with communities on economic development, 
can best use uh, the data. I know how to use uh, certain aspects of the data, and I thank you for just a fantastic um, presentation. But I wanted to know, for example, if we're working with certain um, economic development models um, and we're, we're pulling together certain data to, to do, say, market analysis, feasibility studies, um, do, can you bring that kind of um, issue to the ACS staff in terms of trying to determine how to best approach an issue, or do we simply have to access the, the data itself and, uh, and use our own techniques and, and what we understand the models to be? So one of the tools that we mentioned was Census Business Builder. Um, that's really a popular tool for people who are interested in um, the type of work you're talking about. I think everyone kind of has different needs and what they're wanting for the data, so it's probably just best to kind of go in and, and access what you need. Okay. Uh, in addition, uh, this is Caleb Poplar from ACSO as well. So in addition, um, there was a small business and minority-owned business webinar that uh, was last month. And so if you go to uh, our ACS website, go to Guidance for Data Users, and then training presentations, you'll be able to find a, a whole webinar on that type of information. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Ed Fox. Your line is now open. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Uh, so my question is, for microdata, what's the replacement for data ferret? Yeah, so we are working on a um, replacement for data ferret that would be incorporated into data.census.gov. We're actually in the beta phase of that tool. And so if you go to data.census.gov slash mdat, and that's M-D-A-T, that tool is available now in a beta form, so we can um, go ahead and get it out to the public and so people can provide us with comments. So, yeah, thank you for um, asking about that today. And if you'd like to check that out and provide us any comments you have, that'd be great. Okay. And that was M-B-D-A at the end? I just sent the link to me. Sorry. We just sent the link in the chat, but it's M-D as in dog, A-C. But, yeah, the chat has that information. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Next question is from Raheem Akarimi. Your line is now open. Uh, thank you so much. Um, my name is Raheem Akarimi, calling from the city of Dubuque in Iowa. My question is about uh, MSAs or the Metropolitan Statistical Areas. Um, I was just wondering, uh, does the ACS collect data on MSAs? and? Uh, would it be correct to say that it, to make um, inferences from that data based on MSAs and then to, then on a city level, for instance, say um, a city is located in an MSA, would you be able to make inferences from the data collected on that MSA and then related to that city? Yeah, so I, we do have um, metropolitan statistical area data. Um, and then I believe we also have the ability that you can break out um, the different areas and look at the data that's available for that. Um, if you're making comparisons between the metro area and some of the um, principal places within there, I would recommend separating them instead of doing a direct comparison between the MSA and one of the places. But yes, that is something you're able to do with ACS data. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Next question is from Peter Scheffler. Your line is now open. Thank you. I've enjoyed the webinar. I thought that there were uh, three-year estimates as well, but you just referred to the five-year and the one-year. So can you explain that? Maybe I'm just wrong. Yep, the three-year estimates were discontinued a couple of years ago. Thanks. I'm showing no further questions at this time. All right, it looks like to be the end of today's webinar. I want to thank you again for attending uh, today's webinar and the, the introduction to the American Community Survey. Uh, once again, this material will be made available to you through a recording of uh, the presentation and slides. And uh, we look forward to you joining us uh, in the near future for other um, outreach efforts. Thank you again. Have a great day.
This concludes today's call. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect at this time. Speakers, please stand by.